Hi, everyone. So today we're going to be going over a public forum sample case that Clay wrote for us. And so we're really just going to be diving into the introduction, the framework, the contentions and conclusion and what he included inside of the case and how the case works. So this is his introduction. So he introduces himself and normally you could introduce your partner as well. And then he clearly states the resolution. In this case, the resolution is resolved. The North Atlantic Treaty Organization should substantially increase its defense commitments to the Baltic states. And then he follows that resolution statement with the thesis statement. So you notice that his introduction is very short. It's very to the point and it gets the job done that he is affirming the judge knows the resolution and we have an overview of the rest of his case. Then he starts to introduce some of his framework. So he uses national security for his framework. This framework is clearly linked to the resolution. So we're talking about NATO defense commitments in the Baltic states. So it's very clear that national security is one of the things that the judge should be weighing of great importance in this round. And then he adds some evidence to support this framework. He adds evidence from Edwin Meese, a fellow at the Heritage Foundation. And then he has a direct quotation from that evidence source. So be careful with your evidence standards. Just make sure that you're including everything. On his contentions, his first contention has a very clear tagline that he is talking about Russian aggression. And because of Russian aggression, we need to stay with NATO and increase defense commitments. So, and then he has sub point A and the, also, the next one is sub point B. Notice that they do have very similar structure. So we're just going to be taking a closer look at sub point A. And so his topic sentence here is that Russia has a history of unjustified aggressive policies in the region. So it clearly introduces the issue. And then he starts to introduce empirical evidence and that they are properly cited. That the first piece here is as Radio Free Europe reports. And notice that he has like this two and a hyperlink, that's a footnote. So if his opponent wanted to ask him about where his source came from, he could always just reference that. Um, you could also include that in just a normal reference list. Just be sure that you are citing them properly, that you're including the author, the date, their qualifications, direct quotations. Um, notice that the, the direct quotations he uses are in quotation marks. Um, so you should be including all of these to make sure that your argument is getting through and your argument is valid. So this is just very similar. He still has two pieces of evidence from here. And just make sure that you see he also has Paul Grodd, president of the Ukrainian World Congress, Sarah White, a senior research analyst at Lexington Institute. Just make sure that you're including everything inside of the citation itself because your judge wants to know that your sources are credible. This is his second contention. The only real difference in structure that we see here is that he has a blanket overview statement prior to any of his sub points. So he has the taglines, the topic sentence, the evidence, and then he also has an analysis statement here. Um, but other than that, before he starts talking about his sub points, which he has sub point A, alliances, and sub point B, permanent presence, he has this overview statement that increased NATO defense points are vital to deter Russian aggression. And so that's going to set up the rest of his sub points for this contention as well. Um, just notice here that sub point B, it still has a topic sentence. It still has this transitions. Like, for example, NATO recently introduced, etc. However, as Sally, Sally Painter, a senior advisor to the Atlantic Council, concludes, he is always including um, his evidence, his transitions, and making sure that he has a very clear and straightforward, succinct speech. Um, at the very end here, the permanent presence is the key. Our allies like Lithuania and Poland are asking for permanent commitments. NATO must follow through. This is a short conclusion statement for this contention. And it's also an urging statement that NATO has to follow through on these commitments to the Baltic states. Finally, this is the last piece. Notice that the conclusion is just as short as the introduction. You want the conclusion to be really short and you want it to both restate the thesis and give a summary of your contentions. And he has that in the second sentence here. To prevent Russian military aggression in the Baltics, NATO must increase its defense commitments to include a permanent military presence. That both restates his thesis and summarizes his contentions. And then his last sentence here, um, he's urging the judge um, and so he's just urging the judge to vote for his side. Um, so that's a quick breakdown of this case, the sample case that Clay wrote for us. Um, I hope that was helpful.